Super Bowl 36 participants New England and St. Louis meet for the first time since that matchup some two and a half years ago St. Louis coming in sharing the NFC West lead with Seattle Seahawks at San Francisco in this same time block. Meanwhile the Patriots came into the weekend tied for the AFC East lead with the Jets who are trailing with two and a half minutes to go at Buffalo 22 17. Hello friends. Jim Nance along with Phil Sims and Bonnie Bernstein there is a lot of excitement here Phil about these teams getting together again. Well that's right again Jim because you talk about the Super Bowl that happened almost three years ago but when you're here in St. Louis you talk to Mike Martz you talk to the players it still bothers them the fact that they lost that game they were huge uh, favorites they want a little payback here today. And again they have not met since that matchup in New Orleans where Adam Vinatieri won it with the 48 yard field goal to close the game. We'll see the Patriots coming out first and good news for Patriot fans as Corey Dillon is going to play today. He is active after missing last week's game at Pittsburgh with a thigh injury. So it was a game time decision. He's ready to go and we are too. And the kick away to Bethel Johnson. And Johnson out to the 28 yard line where Tom Brady will start things. He was just 24 years old in that Super Bowl matchup against the Rams, but he drove them in the final 90 seconds. 53 yards to set up the winning Vinatieri field goal. Brady with this line in front of him with Gordon starting for Tom Ashworth, who was put on injured reserve over the weekend because of a back injury. He's out for the year. Brandon Gordon, the right tackle. And again, Corey Dillon, he will start today in the backfield. He has been a huge addition to this team. Picked up in the spring coming over after being the Bengals all time rusher. And Dylan will get it right away with a huge hole out across the 40 and finally battering the Rams secondary and Adam Archuleta for 14 yards. Will they put pressure on Brady Leonard Little could be a central figure in that plan. And Trev Falk in the linebacking core is a cousin of Kevin Falk who we'll see on passing downs for the Patriots and Jeremetrius Butler has the only two picks by St. Louis this season. It was a huge block on that last play by Patrick Pass that helps free Dylan and on first down they're going right back to Corey and more open space across the 50 and finally banged out with a flag down. But he didn't step out until he reached the 40. Ed Hockley has his crew here in St. Louis for this one. 19 yards on the play. Brady to Dillon. And we await the flag. Patriots trying to get Corey Dillon right into this game and get him back involved and get him into the groove because, of course, you know, last week he did not play against the, the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, this is a long conference as the Patriots picked up yardage with ease on the first two snaps of the game. Just what they want to do come out here run the football and control the line of scrimmage help their beaten up secondary by controlling the football. Illegal block in the back offense to 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. A long time for them to settle on the infraction, but that'll back up the Patriots a bit. It'll still be first down. And, and they talk about it. they got to find a way to get pressure on the quarterback. They're not doing it very well so far this year. It is only first and five, even with the penalty because of the big yardage. Falk is in the game, but this is pass. Patrick Pass active today, and boy, is he active on this run near the 30. David Givens helped clear the way 23 yards. Well something we have not seen too often from the New England Patriots this year the screen game and all of a sudden today they come out they use it twice and it's worked well both times. We're just three plays into the game here at the Dome in St. Louis I'd like to welcome the audience who saw the Raiders win at the end on a 19 yard field goal by Sebastian Janikowski. Plays 
Corey Dillon. This time they are stopped for a one yard loss. Dillon is active as you see after missing a game a week ago with a thigh injury. The Patriots struggled so much last week. The offensive side against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Six rushing attempts. Read it. Tied for an NFL record low. Five rushing yards. Second fewest in their history. And when you can't run the football it means you're throwing a lot. Time of possession really went against them. And those are some of the things they want to correct here today. Stay Retired. on the field and get some big plays to score. Three tight ends in. They go again with Dillon. And he's just inside the 30. It'll be third and long. Nice play by Butler coming up after a four yard run. Yeah, you talked about those numbers and the rush attempts goes all the way back to the NFL record set back in 1933 by the Chicago Cardinals with only six rush attempts the entire well, game. Jim it's hard to run the football when you're behind 21 to 3 at the start of the game. But when you want to run the football and you want to slow the game down and do what they're going to try to do today you're going to be in a lot of third five six and seven situations. So this is where they have to be really good at today right here in this kind of situation right at the 30 on third down and seven Brady pumps fires has his man fought. Tries to tiptoe around one defender, Archuleta, and is finally wrestled down at the 24. Damian Lewis got to him, just shy of the first by two yards. So Adam Vinatieri will come out. Yeah. They know all about him here in St. Louis. Well, they do here, and also just I remember the words of Bill Belichick last night. Look, we can't be moving the ball up and down the field and kicking field goals against this offense of the St. Louis Rams and. Start of the game. Here they go. 42 yards with Josh Miller on the hold. And Vinatieri, as he was in New Orleans, to end the game. He opens this one with three from 42 yards. And that is now 16 consecutive games for the Patriots, in which they have scored first. Pretty remarkable. That's a streak. That's the best since all the way back in 1978 in Miami. So Dylan picks up 30 yards as they come right out. They already eclipsed last week's rushing total of five yards on the very first carry of the game. Well, it helps when you have Corey Dillon and, you know, talking to Tom Brady last night, he goes, you know, that was our plan in Pittsburgh is they were just hoping to run the football and kind of control the game in, in that respect. But again, when you don't have your premier runner in the football game, that's a big drop off. Kevin Falk's a good situational player, but he's not a top line uh, physical running halfback like Corey Dillon is. Arlen Harris is the deep man waiting for Vinatieri's kick. And it'll come to Harris at the nine. Going a good burst out to the 31. Bring out Mark Bolger at this point. He is the winningest quarterback by win percentage with a minimum of 10 starts. Plus at home, he's only lost once. He is something else. 15 and 1 at home. Grant Williams starts at right tackle. He started for the Patriots in that Super Bowl win for the Patriots over the Rams two and a half years ago. Now he's a Ram. And Marshall Falk will get the bulk of the work. Hall of Fame career still going on and on with big numbers. 15 and 1 at home, Bulger. The only loss was earlier this season, overtime to New Orleans. He heads outside for a gain of two. Ty Warren got to him first. Romeo Crennel's defense has not allowed an opening drive touchdown by the opposition in a stretch of 26 games and they've got the very mature rookie Vince Wilfork starting on the nose from the outside they want some pressure today from Willie McGinnis and company that strong linebacking group and now here's the big story the secondary Randall Gay starts on one side a rookie free agent and on the other Asante Samuel is Ty Law is out four to six weeks the broken left foot and Ty Poole Tyrone Poole is also out with a knee injury Bulger on second down swings it over to his tight end Manu Maliuna with the reception. Well the Buffalo Bills have pulled off the win over the New York Jets. 
And you kind of all week warned everybody about that one maybe being a game where the Jets were vulnerable. Well, Buffalo, Romeo Cornell defensive coordinator, but Jim, Ro Buffalo, a much better team than their record indicates. How about this for the Patriots? Asante Samuel, they're so thin in the defensive secondary, comes across the field, lowers the shoulder, and that's where it looks like he's hurt is the right shoulder as they're reaching underneath his pads and mm -mm. seeing if there's an injury there. This is the one thing that I could not have happen. Uh, Bill Belichick just. He just I can't even imagine what he's thinking. We look at Troy Brown actually during training camp. He took a few snaps and played a few plays in some preseason games and can you believe this they may have to resort all the way to bringing in the 12 year veteran receiver into the secondary and in fact he's coming right in here on the third play of the game for the Patriots defense Troy Brown. <laughs> you know you try to build depth Bill Belichick experiments a lot with all the players Richard Seymour Mike Vrabel they play offense sometimes just trying to get combinations because a lot of, you get some injuries that hit one position you got to be creative yeah that's right Troy shifting around third down and five they've also brought in earth wind Moreland and Dexter Reed on this passing down for the Rams. The Patriots come crashing in to stop them. That was to Marshall Falk for a gain of four. It'll be a yard shy of the first. Pretty good job. When you talk about this Rams offense or the New, New England defense, they must pressure the passer to take away or so their weakness in the secondary cannot be exposed. Kevin Falk awaits the punt of Sean Landetta still around. In his 20th year in the NFL. It's Falk at the 10 as we welcome the Jets Buffalo audience. And we'll be seeing the Patriots second possession of the game on their first series. They took the opening kick and drove down for a 42 yard field goal by Adam Vinatieri. And the Rams first series ends up being a three and out possession. But we saw Troy Brown have to do some emergency work in the secondary for the Patriots as Asante Samuel went out on the second play. You see the East standings now. The Patriots with the win here could take the full one game lead, really a game and a half because they've beaten the Jets head to head, having come into the week sharing the AFC East lead with New York. And that's Asante Samuel right there. Not a good sign when you take your shoulder pads off. Asante Samuel putting the hit on the tight end of the Rams, bumping him out of bounds. Anu Maliona. And uh, he was injured on the play. So they're so thin. Let's see what the offense can do here for the Patriots on the floor field for the second time today. And over the top, and no flag broken up by Travis Fisher looking for David Patton. Well, what a job by Travis Fisher. Played it extremely well. He knows there's a blitz coming in uh, on Tom Brady. So that means you got to it's just you down the field against a wide receiver. And he is all over Dave, David Patton did it the correct way. He used the backhand to protect himself reached in front of the receiver with the right hand and knocked it down. So a second down and ten for those just joining us. Corey Dillon is active today after missing the game last week. And this is Dillon. Just getting back to the line of scrimmage. Dylan opened this game with a big 14 yard run which was longer than any run in fact more running on that one play than they had all of last week in the loss to the Steelers. Jim there's Adam Archuleta. This is what the St. Louis Rams do. They crowd the line of scrimmage and because they want to do that to stop the run. And when they do that that tells you you can throw the football down the field against single coverage and to back this defense off Tom Brady's going to have to have success throwing the football down the field. Saw the big hit there by Tommy Pauly. So it is now third and ten for the Patriots back at their own 17. Rolling out throwing left. It's Patrick pass. And he'll be about a yard shy of the first. That's his second catch of the day. Pass had missed the last two also because of a thigh injury. Back in the lineup today. 
Well, you know, I talked to Tom Brady last night, and I even said to him, Jim, you heard me. They moved the pocket right, the old shoot screen. Get everybody running one way, and the defense, if they overreact, they go, oh, no, the ball's to the other side of the field. But St. Louis, pretty good speed on defense. Good reaction, stops him just short of the first down. Sean McDonald is back to receive the punt of Josh Miller. And there is a flag. It's going to be a procedure penalty. Full start. Offense. Number 30. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Gerard Cherry. You know, I'm just thinking, Jim, is it last night I said to Tom Brady, boy, I haven't seen those screens. You guys have gotten away from that. He goes, yeah, you know, we haven't done that much this year. Well, he had to know they were going to run a bunch of them today. He didn't even tell us. So. <laughs> Keeping the secrets tight. Miller. It's McDonald losing the handle. Still can't fall on it. Patriots are there with the recovery. Oh, McDonald had two clean plays at the football. Lonnie Paxton, who is the long snapper, who snaps it at one end, falls on it at the other. Well, let's take a look, see if Sean McDonald takes his eyes off the football. Yes, it always is the case. At the last second, you want to see where those defenders, where they're at, where are you going to run the football once you catch it? And if you lose that concentration just for a split second, that's enough to cause a fumble. Well, he actually had three attempts at getting a clean hold of it. And it's a lot harder to catch a, to fall on a fumble on this Astor turf. It's harder, faster, the ball moves a lot more, so tough for Sean McDonald. Troy Brown is in as a third receiver as Asante Samuel walks, walks to the locker room. Fake to Dillon. Brady, left side, man open, Troy Brown. We have an update. Let's send you right back to Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Jim, it is all over in Tampa. Last gasp effort by the Chiefs, fourth and 17. Three-man rush, one of them, Dwight White gets to Trent Green. It's a 34-31 Tampa Bay win over the Kansas City Chiefs, guys. Wow, thank you, Greg. Another wild one there as Michael Pittman scored three touchdowns today in that win. Huge uh, performance by Pittman, including breaking one over 70 yards. You see Denver... San Diego sharing the lead in the AFC West. Crushing loss for the Chiefs. First down here for the Patriots. And just back to the line of scrimmage for Dillon. And what was it that M Mike Martz said about that Tampa team when we met with him on Friday? Oh, he said look out because he, he felt very fortunate to beat him in that Monday night game because don't let that record deceive you. They're coming on. And, well, he just said, look, they're going to make the playoffs. Yeah, he said they're going to be in the playoffs. Mike Martz, you know, that's the other thing. You ask him a question, he'll answer it. There's no monitor that says, oh, let me be careful with this. Hand. He just throws it out there, and it's really, well, listen, for us, it's wonderful. It's refreshing. And the same for Larry Marmy, the defensive coordinator. They tell you the truth. Second and goal from the 10. Brady, pressure from behind. They don't get him. Now they do the second time. Back at the 13. Tioka Jackson and Bryce Fisher double up on him. Good job by Tom Brady looking to the front side. Loses all feel for what's behind him, but has both hands on the football, and that's what stops the fumble. Look at that front hand. It's on the football, and that's why the right hand came completely off. So good mechanics, good skill, good fundamentals by Tom Brady. Third and goal, Kevin Falk is the single back. David Givens, who was questionable this week with a knee, is in. He started. He's lined up on the right side. Brady goes across the middle, and Falk sees it slip right through his hands. He wouldn't have gotten where he needed to go anyway. A couple big opportunities gone by the board for the Patriots. Down in there twice. What you call scoring territory and can't get it done. Have to try to settle for two field goals. Adam Vinatieri back out for the second time. This will be 31 yards. True from 42 on the opening possession of the game. It's now 15 of 16 on the season. And good again. 6 nothing New England. McDonald's fumble. Set up the three for the Patriots.
do. We'd like to welcome the audience just joining us now from the Kansas City Tampa game and the Bucks prevail in that one 34 31 Jim Nance Phil Sims Bonnie Bernstein here in St. Louis. I just want to go back to that fantasy football thing. So how are you doing there Mr. Head Coach. No, well it's <laughs> uh, 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 yeah that's what I thought. six and two including a win over Phil Sims two weeks ago. Oh you beat me two yeah. weeks ago by about 50 points. Well, that tells you something about me. Well. Yeah, I have a new general manager for me, Chris Hatchett. You know, I've hired him, and we'll see. I'm not above firing somebody too quick. Give him another week. Here's the kick. Marlon Harris, one yard line. Oh. Spins around and just out to the 22. That's it. We have two Adam Vinatieri field goals, but the big sub story here is the secondary. Another man is down for the Patriots. We'll see Bolger and company in a moment. We are back in St. Louis and you're looking at a newly activated Patriot Earthwind Moreland in the secondary that has seen Asante Samuel taken off the field to the locker room They're telling us shoulder injury doubtful or questionable whether he'll return. So no gain for Falk on that first down carry. Let's take a look at the must get to the quarterback stop the run and really protect the beat up secondary and so far they've done very well up front. Second and nine and someone jumped. Richard Seymour was out of his stance early but was there movement first on the St. Louis side. Saw that time of possession stat right before the snap. Patriots have had it. Before the ball was snapped, false start, offense, number 83, five-yard penalty, still second down. And let's go down to Bonnie Bernstein. Bonnie? Hi, Jim and Phil. Well, in Super Bowl 36, Mark Bulger was on the bench as the Rams fell to the Patriots, but he is at 15 and 1 here in the Dome, and the Rams think a couple of things might be in his favor. The obvious, New England's banged up secondary, now with Asante Samuel out. That's even worse, and Mark says there is nobody I've seen who gets rid of the ball quicker than Mark Bulger. Second down and 14. As he looks down the middle, open man, and out at the 38-yard line is Isaac Bruce. Gain of 21. They're already working on Earth Wind Moreland. Well, when your defense is beat up in the secondary, you've got to play a little cautious. That means back up, play some zone coverages, and look at the space in this secondary. And Mark Bolger just throws it up. They throw inside routes to their wide receivers better than anybody in the National Football League. And not only that, like Bill Belichick says, well, they run them at 25 yards deep. So they put a lot of pressure on their offensive line to hold them out so the quarterback has time to throw it down the field. First down, they come in on Bulger, and they're going to drag him down with a fumble, and they're going to rule him down first. Ty Warren grabbed him by the jersey and just slung the quarterback to the ground Ted Johnson with a recovery but that's all for naught St. Louis ball but uh, a sack for the Patriots again you got to be excited to be a defensive lineman playing the St. Louis Rams this is no so called West Coast offense where it's a lot of short drops and quick rhythm throws where you can't get to the quarterback this is deep drops Ty Warren taking advantage of Grant Williams the ex Patriot and coming inside and getting Mark Bulger for the sack. You know the Patriots had not had a sack nor an interception in the past two games but now they have a sack setting up second down 16 and get just a little bit of it back plus a flag as Marshall Falk is the receiver sacks and interceptions usually go hand in hand if you're not pressuring the quarterback you can't expect him to throw it off target and get the interceptions. Before the pass was thrown, illegal contact defense number 55. Five yard penalty from the previous spot and an automatic first down. Well, that's a big one on Willie McGinnis. And this is something the Rams thought that the Patriots were guilty many times back in that Super Bowl loss in New Orleans. You think? <laughs> I mean, what well, is it they, they said that you're visiting with Torrey Holt this week? Well, Torrey Holt watching Willie McGinnis makes contact about seven, eight. Well, he gets two of them. Two late contacts, but 
They were very aggressive, grabbing and holding. Torrey Holt says they just tackled us at the line of scrimmage. Mark Bolger didn't play in the game. I said, what was your thoughts as you watched it on tape? Man, they hold a lot. So, <laughs> hey, you take advantage of the rules. First and 10, and a 10-yard gain as Bruce makes the catch. We'll give him 11, and Eugene Wilson on the coverage. Yeah, this is going to be hard for Mike March not to just say, let's throw it. Because the more they throw it, the slower the pass rush is going to get because you're going to get tired. Isaac Bruce, all time receiver. How Bruce Almighty. Almighty. <laughs> well, that says it all. Yeah. When you see these ones all to the right side, it tells you he's really good. You're talking about over 11,000 yards in his career. And it's Falk on first down and steps out after a nice 10 yard gain. Manu well, Maliona helped clear out that right side. Yeah, they did, Jim, and they're going to get you. They really got you going here for the Patriots. They spread you out. You're thinking pass. You want to get to the quarterback. You've done it. So you go upfield and look at the space that Marshall Falk has inside. Kevin Curtis, 83, going against Irkwin Moreland. Not a bad job. He's not a train killer, but he got out there and got in the way. Isaac Bruce out. It is. Another first down for the Rams. Nice drive they're putting together here. And Steven Jackson, the rookie, with his first carry, goes for only two. Let's get an update back to Greg in New York. All right, Jim, in Denver, the Broncos have drawn first blood against the Houston Texans. Jake Plummer, 34 yards to Jeb Poutier with the extra point. The Broncos lead it by a score of 7 0. They are in the final minute of the first quarter. Jim and Phil, back to you. All right, thank you, Greg. What did you see there? Well, no, I think Greg's probably got some tired arms today holding Boomer Esiason and Dan Marino yeah. apart. A little conflict <laughs> in the studio. Two quarterbacks. Uh, well, you know, having look, some fun. Hey, quarterbacks, they all quarterbacks hate the other quarterbacks. But I think it had some. You actually had a role in that. How? Because uh, I guess everybody was calling Boomer Phil. Second down and nine, and again it's Falk, and again it's just short yardage as Vince Wolfert. Teddy Bruschi were both there for a stop after a gain of two. This is the first time the Rams have had the football in New England territory in this first quarter, final minute of the opening quarter. You know, it's really interesting. I, I, I see a lot of Ram games on TV, and everybody talks about it. They throw the football down the field. You watch them practice. I tell you what, if you're the quarterback for the Rams, you better have great endurance in your arm. You better be able to chuck it down the field a long way, too. I, I, no exaggeration. I'll bet you Mark Bulger on Friday's practice threw at least 30 balls, 30 yards or farther past the line of scrimmage of practice. So you got to have a little endurance too for the receivers who are running up and down that field all the time and back to the huddle. So timeout called with a third down play on the way. We'll be right back to St. Louis. We're back in the Gateway City and Monday an all due late show. Dave welcomes the one and only Tom Hanks. Plus music from Nelly, Dave's all new all this week here on CBS. Now the Rams called that timeout because they were running out of time on the play clock as Troy Brown again joins the secondary and Samuel is putting the uniform back on. Third down and seven. Five wide receiver low. Ooh. Either the quarterback or the center forgot the snap count. Mark Bulger took off. Kind of hard to believe that a quarterback can forget the snap count, isn't it? False start. <laughs> Offense number 10. Five-yard penalty. Still third down. Did you ever do that? Oh my gosh, I used to do it all the time. It's kind of embarrassing. You go up and get underneath the center. Oh yeah. Oh, sorry, it was my fault. You get underneath the center and you go, uh, <clears throat> what snap count? Yeah, what was that again? And you, and you have all these little um, catchphrases you use. Oh, like Monday is one, Tuesday's two. When of course the defense figures that out pretty quick. Sonny Samuel wants to get back in, but in the meantime, Troy Brown doing some emergency work on defense. Third and 12. And Bulger never had a chance. Jarvis Green has his second sack of the season. Three man rush still got to Mark Bulger. You look at this New England defensive line, they just look bigger than the St. Louis Rams offense. and. They're putting the pressure on Mark Bolger here in the first quarter. Yeah, that ends the first quarter, and it's 6 nothing. 
New England. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We're about to begin the second quarter to summarize what we've seen. Opening possession of the game. Patriots drive to Vinatieri range. Good from 42. And then a fumble by McDonald of the Rams. Sets up another Vinatieri field goal. From 31 yards out, 6-0 as the Rams will start the second period with a punt from Sean Landetta. Falk. Will he field it? He will. Patriots last week gave up 21 points in the first quarter. Most allowed by the Patriots in a game since 1979. But they don't give up anything today. We'll be right back. Back in St. Louis and check out special teams. Matt Chatham of the Patriots. Tommy Pauly of the Rams. Don't ever leave your feet. <laughs> Tommy, big mistake. And they were exchanging words yeah. on the quarter change before the punt. We'll watch that one the rest of the day. Patriots a good thing in this game, Jim. Start from their own six. Corey Dillon, the single back. Dillon changing it, or Brady changing it up with three on the down clock. Ball moves. Fumble in the end zone. The Rams, if they recovered, it's a touchdown. It is. Leonard Little with the recovery for the score. Big risk by the New England Patriots. Crowd noise is always a factor here in the in the dome. Tom Brady looked like he might have been changing the play. The offensive line, they're not quite in tune with the snap count. And Leonard Little, he is the best pass rusher for the St. Louis Rams. Causes the fumble and the touchdown. It's the second week in a row the Patriots have allowed a defensive touchdown. Sometimes you just have to know you're in a bad situation and just let it go. Tom Brady, they're holding this up to make sure it's a fumble, and it it clearly is. Reminds you of one last week, a fumble last week that was recovered by the Steelers and led to their second touchdown. Damian Lewis was in there to help knock it free, so Wilkins in for the extra point. And the Rams defense has given St. Louis the lead. 7-6 Rams on the fumble recovery by Leonard Little. We're back in St. Louis and the kick from the Rams after the defensive touchdown returned by Patrick Pass out to the 36. And it could have been really a disaster for the Patriots. Pass had a hard time getting the handle on the kick finally able to scoop it up and get past the first wave and kicker Jeff Wilkins helped bring him down at the 36. The first down for New England trailing 7 6. It's Corey Dillon right side and a nice piece of running out to the 42 pass through the block that freed him for six. Well I want to go back Damian Damian Lewis is the one that caused that fumble on Tom Brady for the touchdown and Leonard Little recovered. Uh, Damian Lewis just overpowered Stephen Neal uh, to get to Brady and, and let's take a look at it. Damian Lewis just pushes by Stephen Neal overpowers him the crowd noise helps him and Leonard Little coming from the other side falls on the football for a touchdown. Second down four for New England. Brady has been sacked twice in this game nine times the last two and a half games. Again, having a hard time communicating. Pitches it. Dylan, wide open room. And he's all the way down to the 40 yard line, into the secondary before Archuleta could get him. Oh, what a what a nice relief for the Patriots. You get your star running back back. And I told you early in the game that the St. Louis Rams like to crowd the line of scrimmage. And one of the reasons why, if they don't, they have a hard time stopping the run. And look at the blocking up front. Patrick Pass gets a good block. Joe Andruzzi, excellent block. The center, Dan Copeland, also. Mark it at the 41, first down. Opening two minutes of the second quarter. Delay give, Dylan. Just back to the line. 
Tino E. Samoa was the first to get to him. And Corey Dillon, boy, did they miss him last week in Pittsburgh. And we talked to Bill Belichick trying to gauge last night if he would be playing today. And he really wasn't sure. He said, listen, it's going to be a game time decision. If the game was during the, he wouldn't have played, but maybe now a couple of days later after full practice, maybe he'll be ready to go, and he is. The Rams think the Patriots are a power running team and a play action team that throws it deep. And that's what they are when Corey Dillon's in there. Second 10. Fake to Dillon, cross the middle too high for Patton. Corey Dillon, after sitting out last week's game, he had back-to-back 100-yard -back games before that. Three in all in a Patriot uniform this his first season in New England. Well, he has been everything that he was advertised to be. He has really given the New England offense an identity. Before, it was like, what will they be this week? A downfield throwing team, a screen team, five wide receivers. Well, when he's in the lineup, they're going to put him behind the quarterback and run him quite often. On the passing down, he's out. Falk is in. Third and ten. To Falk. Makes the move for the first. And finally, banging around at the 29. First down, New England. Gain of 12. And you know what happens when you have Corey Dillon in the football game? It lets Kevin Falk be what he really is. A role player who... Comes in on third down and catches the football. Tom Brady, nice little fake to the right. He knew all along that defense pre-snap that he was going to throw it to Kevin Falk. He faked to the right to create just a little more space so Kevin Falk could catch it and get a couple extra yards. Falk stays in, gets the handle here. Breaks the tackle and down to the 20. Run of nine for Kevin Falk. Well, Kevin Falk acting like Corey Dillon this time. He says he's really learned a lot working behind Corey Dillon. Nice job. Patient. Didn't run into the line of scrimmage and just get no gain. He looked for a little cutback. He found it and gets a couple extra yards after he's hit. Kevin Falk came in having caught 14 balls the last two games. And his catch on this series keeps the drive going, plus a nice run. So it's second and one. Dylan returns. Dylan gets the handle and set back a yard. Tino E. Samoa and Trev Falk both got to him third and two coming up. Corey Dillon, you see 38 yards with our uh, stats tracks. 38 yards for Dylan now puts him on the season over 600 and. Uh, 75 yards and that means he's already moved past last year's total for their leading rusher on the Patriots Antoine Smith. He's already outgained Smith's total of a year ago which was tops on the team. Third and two on the 21. Brady has his first down target David Gibbons. Nice job by Tom Brady. They fake the, the run to his left. Look at that alley he gets to throw the football into. That's a play the Patriots use quite a bit. They get the defense. They get all their offensive players to the left side. The defense shifts that way. You fake a run there, and that gives the backside receiver a lot of space to run into. So, Givens, first catch of the game, coming off the best game of his career last week. Eight receptions and a couple of touchdowns. They can pick up a first inside the one. First down and ten. And it's Dillon making the move to get away. And Dillon is out of bounds at the two. Well, you can't help but watch this and go, man, that game last week in Pittsburgh would have, would have been a lot different if mm. Corey Dillon would have been in there. It, it just shows you, you don't have to block them all when he runs. He can run them over and, oh, excuse me, I'll just run around. What a nice move. For a big man, they always say the sound of a good running back if you're a big man with little feet, and that's what he showed that time. That was Travis Fisher. He escaped. Mike Vrabel has come into the lineup. He's lined up on the left side. Time of possession, New England doing what they wanted to do, dominate the pace of play. 
Second down and one. Play action fake. The lob pass. And the ball is caught by Vrabel. We told you he just came in. He caught the last touchdown in the Super Bowl this past February 1st. And now he comes in and snags another. Oh, man, is he excited. And he, I know why he's so excited and pumped up. Because even if he was a tight end or a wide receiver, that was still a really good catch. Tom Brady stretches him out to the limit. Oh, right on the fingertips. That is a very that was awesome. acrobatic catch. When Tom Brady let it go, I said he's being careful. That's too far, but Mike Vrabel, what an athlete. What a player, outside linebacker, and does a really tremendous job in short yardage situations. <laughs> Mike Vrabel. <laughs> Looking like he plays on offense all the time. So Vinatieri connects the extra point. Mike Vrabel became the first defensive player to score a touchdown in a Super Bowl lined up on offense. The first guy since the fridge. He did it in Houston. Now he does it in St. Louis. Mike Vrabel, a linebacker. Hauls in the pass from Tom Brady, giving Brady 14 consecutive games with a touchdown pass. I'll tell you what, though, if he wasn't a linebacker, he could be a tight end in the National Football League, too. Arlen Harris on the run back from the six to, to the 30, to the 40. There is a flag. And all the way out to the 44. 38 yard run back, but the flag is back at the 22. Ed Hockley, the referee. Man, Ed's looking pumped today, isn't he? It's got to be the most in shape referee in the history of the NFL. He's doing a little carbo loading, I noticed last <laughs> night at one of the what. great Italian restaurants in St. Louis. I promise you, before he comes out in this in the game every week, I mean this is a compliment. He's probably knocking off a couple hundred push-ups in that locker room. I happened to catch him up at Giovanni's last night. Yeah. On I, the hill. He's packing it in. But I, I, I never said this, and I meant. He did the Super Bowl last year down in Houston. I didn't get a chance to during the game, but I, I tell you, the whole crew did a tremendous job. He was in charge of it. It was really clean. No plays that you go, oh, they blew it, and none of that going on. So it's uh, a credit to him and his, his whole staff. What a job they did there. Now, if he could just speed things up here. <laughs> there were no fouls on the play. Well, that's good for the Rams. They'll start out at the 44. Vrabel, look at the catch. The feet are down. Grace. Bill Belichick's side leads 13-7, but a lot of unhappy people here at the Dome in St. Louis because while we were away, Ed Hockley and his crew came back and said there was a foul on that last return. Here's, here's why, Jim. Ed... Let's go, let's turn there was an illegal block in the back during the return by the receiving team. The 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Here's what happened. Ed Hockley threw a flag on this block and somebody else told him to pick it up and he did. But he didn't realize what's the second penalty. Robert Thomas top of your screen blocked in the back. Blayton block in the back. Easy call for the officials and a good job getting it straight. Back at the 15 first down and for two running into Ted Johnson that wasn't though the Ed Hockley one the first one that was not a, a block in the back you felt no it was not I thought the uh, receiving team he got his hands in front of the defender rushing down the field when you do that it's clean and I do like that that they'll get together one says I saw it it was a penalty and two other officials might come and say no one uh, we had a better angle on it we saw it and they picked it up Second down and eight. Wilford in on the quarterback who gets away. Bulger. And he is hammered at the 26. That's enough for the first down. And it was Mike Vrabel who firmly brought him to the turf. Oh, that's a dream hit for a linebacker. But Vince Wilfork, 75. And we told you, Mark Bolger, the St. Louis Rams saw it down the field. They hold the football a long time, and don't get greedy when you're a quarterback. Oh, yes. And we talked with Vince Wilford last night, and you know he's playing the nose 
sometimes out on the end position. He's on the end right now, not getting that many opportunities to get in the quarterback's face. Well, that time he did, and he took advantage of being outside. He remains outside. It's Wilford. First down, 10, and Falk. Falk breaking it across the 35 and stepping out at the 40. Running behind Adam Timmerman for 14 yards. Marshall Falk with that run moved past Barry Sanders on the all time yards from scrimmage list into fourth position with only Jerry Rice Walter Payton and Emmett Smith in front of him. Steven Jackson is in first and ten rookie from Oregon State. It's his second carry and Jackson for only two yards. Steven Jackson, nice change up for the St. Louis Rams. You got Marshall Falk, who would prefer to run around you if he gets the opportunity. And then Steven Jackson, first round draft pick from Oregon State. He comes in, he is six foot two, 233. And when we met him on Friday, I went, wow, you are one big man. Yeah, and he's, you know, with this, with Marshall Falk obviously having a couple of knee surgeries in the last 15 months, they really needed some insurance. They moved up in the draft. He was the first running back taken. And he said that Marshall has helped me grow. First guy of the calling, Marshall Falk after the draft. Second down, play wide open. They've got the tight end. Manu Maliuna all the way down to the 11-yard line. Rodney Harrison prevents the touchdown, but a 48-yard hookup. It's just got to be a breakdown. It's a play-action fake by Mark Bulger, but it's not like it's something you don't expect. And a oh, little, they do that a lot. They fake the old Statue of Liberty, and when they do it, the New England defense goes for it completely. Nobody is covering Manu Manaluna down the field. Well, I just butchered that name. Dave Close. Mahu Maliuna, the longest catch of his career, 48 yards. First down from the 11. Felt like Dan Marino there. And over into the flats. Got his man. It's Bruce. And Bruce Almighty, touchdown, St. Louis. It's a play that was reminiscent of the old St. Louis Rams. They don't do it as much now as they used to, where everybody runs deep and one of the receivers comes underneath the coverage. You want to play it safe, they'll throw it short, and the speed takes it into the end zone for Isaac Bruce. Chris Chandler on the hold. And Wilkins boots it through. That's Isaac Bruce's second touchdown of the season. Covers 11 yards. And the Rams move back in front. Well, that didn't take long. 85 yards in six plays. And Isaac Bruce has his first touchdown since the opening game of the season. And a quirky kick on one hop to Patrick Pass. And pass out to the 28. Mike Martz, he got his offense in gear on that series. Ends up in the old vet's hands. Bruce for the touchdown and the lead, 14-13. From the 27, New England first down with five minutes to go in the first half. And the flag. False start, offense, number 82, five-yard penalty, first down. What did you see on the touchdown, Phil? Well, here's what they do. The Rams, if you want to be aggressive, they'll throw it over the top. The tight end goes up the field. Marshall Falk goes deep. Watch Isaac Bruce come underneath. The defense retreats. Nobody's short. Nice job by Mark Bulger finding him, and look how fast they run. It's just, well, look, they built this team to play on turf, and they take advantage of it. It is first and 15. Back at the 22.
Brady. Got one on one out there. Looking for Gibbons, and he's got the grab inside the 30. Jeremetrius Butler was defending, and Gibbons brings it down for 50. Jeremetrius Butler is in perfect position, and he just misses the ball to the top of the screen. He's not fooled. He's running right along. Watch his left hand. And he misses it, and Gibbons, what concentration. Hangs on to the football. Excellent technique by Butler. Right hand on the receiver, left hand, goes to knock it down, just misses the football. That is the longest pass play of the season for the Patriots. First down, Gary. Corey Dillon to the 25. And again, if you're looking for free fantasy football, you can experience all the thrilling action and intense competition with NFL fourth quarter fantasy. Sign up today by clicking on fantasy at CBSSportsLine.com. You know, earlier I didn't get a chance to ask you this. You said something about free, and you, and, you know, insinuated that I'm cheap. That it would <laughs> no, be no, thing. no, I can definitely vouch for Who'd that not being the case. There are a few guys though on this oh. on this crew who I would think this would be very attractive. Mike Arnold. Oh. Hold on. And there on the second down carry, Corey Dillon is dropped back at the 28 by Tommy Pauley and Trev Falk. Well, you watch this St. Louis defense. They're, they're, they are what I would call a gambling defense. They move around a lot. They try to sneak a safety up there. They, they try to confuse you and beat you with the speed. But if they guess wrong, that's why they give up big plays and they get gashed sometimes in the running game. Third down nine, Patriots, 28-yard line of the St. Louis Rams. Troy Brown back, back in. Stepping forward and pass wide of the mark looking for Givens. So bring out Vinatieri for a try from about... 45 yards. It's excellent protection up front. Leonard Little is lining up as a linebacker and coming in a different spot every single time. The Patriots have been ready for it. They're blocking him, but Tom Brady off target for a reason because nobody was open in the middle of the field. There you see his career stats right at about 70 percent. From beyond the 40, this would be his longest kick of the season. 45 yards, military, and he is now three for three on the game. That is the fourth lead change of the quarter. Patriots back ahead, 16-14. Go Rams! Go Rams! Tonight on 60 Minutes, who is the big credit card company's worst nightmare? A man who wants to save you money. How? We'll find out on 60 Minutes. Bring a big audience in. <laughs> Terry. Run back by Harris to the 34. These two teams that met in Super Bowl 36, as you see, Matt Chatham has another disagreement. Remember that game? Ty Law with the run back. First touchdown of the game. Ricky Proles, 26 yard touchdown catch from Warner, ties it, but Adam Vinatieri from 48 yards as time expires gives the Patriots their first Super Bowl title. You know, I didn't even think about that game as I. Uh, was coming out here this week. Tom Brady, the MVP. Good solid game, last minute drive, just like this past year to win it. But it was brought up quite a few times by coaches, players. Uh, I guess when you lose the Super Bowl, that's going to be a sore spot for a long time. Bolger on first down, pressure in his face. And Torrey Holt runs over to make that grab his first of the game. Mike Vrabel again. Was in the middle of the action and he was closing in on Bulger. Well, you think they don't throw it down the field? Mark Bulger held the foot. The crowd even got nervous. It took so long for him to throw the football. And at what pressure they put on their offensive line? One, two, three. I'd already panicked and let it go a long time ago. All the way across the field to Torrey Holt. Two guys there, but you're just not used to covering that long against a wide receiver. Two guys who were backups, Dexter Reed and Earthwind Moreland both on the coverage. First and ten. Samuel has not returned into the secondary for the Patriots. Looking for Holt again. What a grab though. Give him the catch on the sideline right at the 30. Eugene Wilson and again Earthwind Moreland covering. Did he get his right foot in? It looked pretty close. 
It was not ruled a force out up the field inside breaking out again. A lot of pressure against the defense. Oh did he get it in it's not even close. Well how about the effort just dragging the back foot. Torrey Holt and Isaac Bruce. They're tall athletic they're nimble they're fast they're pretty they're graceful and most of all we talked about it earlier Jim they have endurance they never slow down during the game. You didn't say smooth. Well smooth too. I guess so. Smooth with three O's. How's that. That's how good it is. That is smooth. That's the two minute warning. Bolger. Mark Bolger has not missed in this game. He's nine for nine. The last two have gone to Holt. We've reached the two minute warning. Back here with the new 49er. <laughs> Phil Sims. That's Happy right. birthday, my man. Hey, I like you. your tie, by the way. I know that was a present from yeah, me. Yeah, my daughter bought it for me. Yeah. How about that? This game's really living up to what we thought it might be. We hoped it would be. Yeah, I, I think we, we thought it might be exciting. It's turned out to be that to watch the adjustments for the team. The St. Louis go, Rams offense is it comes as advertised down the field big plays and the Patriots have had a few big plays in the row. First down Bulger. Again he hasn't missed until now. We'll bring it up. And it's wide of the mark looking for the tight end who made the big play last time Manu Maliuna. We've got the next tell halftime report coming up shortly with Greg and Dan. Shannon and Phil. I'm, I'm sorry that's Boomer for all the latest scores and highlights. It's all coming up with the next halftime report. That's what you were talking about earlier. There yeah, might be something. Right. You all know, right. you can, listen, I know it's not like the most flattering thing somebody can say to you in the world when they call Boomer me, but it happens to me too all the time. Well, you get called Phil? Yeah. Yeah, I get called Phil. <laughs> A the Boomer. Second down and 10. Got Troy Brown back in on defense. Bulger's looking, looking, and now gets his man out of the backfield. Actually coming across on a slant it's Isaac Bruce for eight third and two on the way. Roosevelt Colvin on the hit. There was a flag. First indication I saw was against the Rams. Ronnie Harrison's in there discussing it. Illegal formation offense was an ineligible number on the left end of the line five yard penalty. Repeat second down. We've got a 16 14 game with the Patriots in front on three venetary field goals and a Mike Vrabel touchdown catch. Illegal formation. Nobody's covering a tackle. All three wide receivers are off the line of scrimmage and sometimes uh, the officials will let you get away with it. But that was blatant. Somebody has got to step up there and cover the left tackle. You saw that a few times in your film work this week. Yeah, the Rams actually lined up in some wrong formations and didn't. Oh, nice look play. at this. Trying to fake them out, but the Patriots were not fooled as Bulger did the old uh, Academy Award effort. Trying yeah. to walk to the sideline. They snap at the Falk. You know what? They faked me in practice and they got me here today. I thought Mark Bulger was going to come across and say, call a timeout. He's going to give that disgusted look. Oh, look at this, coach. But. The pretty good acting. Yeah, very good acting. But you alert for all those things when you play the St. Louis Rams in New England. They had a tremendous reaction to it. Was he a drama major at West Virginia? He must have been. Third and 11 with a minute 14 to go in the half. And Bolger now trying to step outside. He'll go left side. Waves his receiver to move on and a fumble. Fumble and fallen on by Jarvis Green. Was he out of bounds or in play? Knocked loose by Willie McGinnis. Jarvis Green right on the sideline with the recovery and they say Patriot football. It looked like Jarvis Green got possession of the football before any of his body got out of bounds. And Mark Bulger really trying to pick up the first down. You got to think of the situation before the snap. No you're in field goal range. Even if you throw it away it's going to be three points trying to get his receiver down the field. Loses sight of Willie McGinnis. Here comes the football. It's going to be close. It is going to be close. That shoulder might have been out. This has got to be called from upstairs. It's inside of two minutes. McGinnis just saw that football out there and couldn't wait to get there. Do you look Jarvis Green does he have possession falls on it. He's got it out of bounds. 
And it's going to be challenged. Well, from that angle, it looks like he's in. Looks like the recovery is good. Now, if they do rule that he was out of bounds, the ball will be brought back to where Mark Bulger fumbled it. And I'm sure they would still probably try a long field goal. Well, talking about a three point decision right here. Sure. Jarvis Green already with a sack in this game and now hope, hoping his recovery will hold up. Let's see what any see if we can uh, see anything that this is the better good view see everybody indisputable evidence that's what they must have again the call on the field was a recovery so it's got to be indisputable visual evidence otherwise to overturn it but recovered inbounds just alerting the fans here in St. Louis that the reviewing exactly what we've talked about. Well, there's no doubt in my mind he gets possession almost and boy he puts look at that left hand. He gets it around that football. Boom, it's in there. Not an easy call for Ed Hockley. I say it, it's a three point decision. I don't want to give away a 50 yard field goal because it would be from the point of the fumble. That's back at the 35, which would mean that Wilkins would come out and try one from about 52, 52, 53 yards. And Wilkins can make them, particularly inside this stadium from outside the 50, 14 times in his career. He's made the long ball from 50 and beyond. Yeah, I'd say when you kick indoors, it's good for seven to eight yards. It just, you know, I watch these guys warm up today. They make it look so easy. They don't have to worry about it. Nothing gets in their head. There's no wind. There's no bad turf. There's no bad footing. There's no excuses. Well, Ed Hockley continues to review. We should review the Pittsburgh Steelers win today against the Philadelphia Eagles. How about that two week stretch? Taking on two, the last two undefeated teams in the league. And beating them both by a combined score of 61 23. First the Patriots and today the Eagles. I think what's so impressive is is it back to back weeks they physically dominated the team they went against and uh, they did it in every aspect you could you could bring up today. Baltimore and Cleveland playing tonight and you see Pittsburgh moves to seven and one with that win. They got Jerome Bettis today with Deuce Staley inactive with a hamstring injury. And the bus ran for 149 yards. Wow, and it was just a, hey, he was tremendous. That offensive line was had an outstanding day for the Steelers today. The ruling on the field stands as called. New England recovered the ball. First down. And again, you know, I really think it had to do with you just can't say for sure that it was definitely the other way. Not indisputable evidence. It's so close. It was a thin line right on the sideline, and it'll go to the Patriots. Not enough there to overturn it. So New England now which operates more efficiently than anyone in the league in the last two minutes of the first half has a full assortment of timeouts. And we've got the next tell halftime report coming up shortly with Greg and Dan and Shannon and Boomer from the studio in New York. First and ten with a minute and two to go in the first half. Brady's pass incomplete was looking for Kevin Falk and a flag. This will be a late hit on the quarterback. Leonard Little or a blow to the head. This drive this personal foul. He hit the quarterback with his head. 15 yard penalty first down. Leonard Little scored the game's first touchdown but now the Patriots are set up after this play by Little it cost him 15. That's uh, well they got away with one. It looks like Leonard Little put his face into Tom Brady. He did not lower his head and use the crown of his helmet which is illegal. He used his face. And Mike Martz is doing some jawing on the sideline. 56 seconds first down New England. Brady zips it. Patton had it. Goes right through his hands. You know, Jim, this remember the drive when they won their first Super Bowl. Tom Brady got at the end of the game. Not much time left. Three timeouts against the St. Louis Rams, and they drove down and kicked the game winning field goal. Tom Brady has taken his team 
to four touchdowns this season in the last two minutes. 31 points in all the Patriots have scored this season in the final two minutes of the first half. That's the tops in the league. Second down 10. Bringing everybody. And Givens had fallen. Unable to get back in time to make the catch. Jeremetrius Butler again is the cover man. Look outside. Tom Brady needs to get rid of the football. David Givens doesn't come out of the cut real well. You know, the playing on this AstroTurf is tough for visiting teams. Sometimes the traction is actually too good. There it is. Four touchdown passes. The four touchdowns. Brady's led him to in the last two minutes. Third and ten. Brady, great time. Pass caught. Patton's first catch of the day. And the Patriots set up now at the 37. And they take their first time out. They're driving. They're at the St. Louis 37, leading 16-14. Jim Nance, Phil Sims, Bonnie Bernstein. And we talked to Tom Brady about why he's so efficient in the last two minutes. Yeah, you know, Jim, it, it, there's a couple reasons why. First off, good protection, and he lets the second receiver come across the middle. Troy Brown was first. Look at that big hole, and he makes a perfect throw. And if you want protection against the Rams, you better take care of 91, a double teaming. Kevin Falk hits him before he goes out. But one of the reasons why they're so good, they practice it all the time, of course, every single week. And it's the same plays in the two-minute drill. So you get really good at executing that, that small group of plays in these kind of situations. Again, the blitz on the way. Brady steps away from the pressure. Ball in the air and almost picked. Gawain Gross had a chance off the deflection. Hey, what these corners for the St. Louis Rams. Jeremetrius Butler on the top of your screen. Not backing away. In fact, David Gibbons used his hand and pushed him away. They are being aggressive coming inside and trying to intercept these passes. They're they're being set up for a double move. That's not something they've done with efficiency this year at all. The Rams, they have only two picks. Worst in the league in that category. When you overplay, you give them a move and go deep. Second and ten wide open. And David Patton steps out. That's Travis Fisher bouncing him out. But a 14-yard pickup. Well, I tell you, Jim, you talked about it, how good they are in these type of situations. Tom Brady, nice and relaxed, finds space in the pocket, and just lasers the football to the outside to David Patton. David Patton with two catches on this drive. 24 seconds to go in the half, and again, 31 points this season, last two minutes of the half, and they're driving again. You play it safe if you're on defense. Brady rolling out. Looking, looking. Archuleta was moving in on him, and it's incomplete with 18 seconds. And why I'm saying you play it safe, Jim, look at the situation. Look where they're at. They're on the 23 yard line. You almost say that Adam Vinatieri is surely going to make the field goal, so make them throw it short, but they gamble. They're on the blitz. Tom Brady gets out of the pocket, but the coverage downfield saves. Come back to me, he's saying. Come back. Yeah, that's right. When he moves out of the pocket, he doesn't do it a lot when he gets way outside, but you've got to change your route when the quarterback moves. Kevin Casper sees his first action of the game. Receiver at the bottom of your screen, now in motion. And they fake the snap to Brady. It goes to Falk. And with not a lot of room, he decides to step out. Givens was trying to throw a block. There is a flag. Got some quarterbacks doing some good acting here today. <laughs> Which one was the better actor? This time Brady uh, doing the old thing Bolger tried to pull off on the last series by the Rams. Well, Brady stole that from Brett Favre. Offside, defense, number 96. Five-yard penalty, repeat second down. Well, we saw Mark Bolger, his acting, Tom Brady. Oh, it's a high snap. No, 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 second and five. Tell you what, that's... You saw the two nominees. Who do you give the, uh, the Oscar to? <laughs> Neither. How's that? Can you do that? I thought Bolger 
Yeah, both may have outacted ball. him. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's see if Brady can out throw him on second down with 12 seconds to go in the half. Corey Dillon, the single back. You give up the completion and sacrifice a field goal. You don't take a chance. The pressure, he had to get it away, and Leonard Little forced that whole play. Patrick pass incomplete the target, but Brady had no chance. Eight seconds, still time for one more play. No, they're going to bring out Vinatieri. Well, you bring him out. You still have two timeouts left. And what this does, and, and, and you know, I'm sure Coach Belichick's thinking about it. Bad snap, fall on it, call a timeout, and and line up and try it again. They call a timeout right now, with eight seconds to go in the half. Vinatieri out for his fourth try of the day. All right, during this timeout, the Patriots have thought about it. They bring back out the offensive unit. One more play. You still have a timeout. Eight seconds to go. That's enough time to make a full play without endangering, put your team in danger of not getting the field goal unit out. If you catch it over the middle, you don't think you're going to score. You, you give yourself up and call a timeout. Tom Brady knows he cannot hold the football. It's got to be a quick decision and throw it immediately. From the 18, eight seconds. Pressure, heavy pressure. He just unloads it. Tyoka Jackson made that play almost impossible for Brady. Boy, it did. I tell you what, the St. Louis Rams, they are getting to Tom Brady off and on. Tyoka Jackson, 97, just keeps hustling. Tom Brady can see the pressure coming in. Whew. Well, you hold your breath, though, when you see the yeah, tackle right around the knees. When the hit comes low. Brady talks to Kevin Falk. Want to know a little bit about that pressure picking up the blitz. 36-yard try on the way. Adam Vinatieri to close out the half. And Adam Vinatieri is, again, a story when facing the Rams. Four field goals in the half. 19-14 Patriots. The last two halves of football between these teams end with Vinatieri field goals. One back to New Orleans. And now today, the only touchdown for the Patriots linebacker coming in offense. Isaac Bruce from Bulger for the Rams. New England leads it. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Patriots lead it at halftime, 19-14. Corey Dillon. Back for New England today, opening up that ground attack that was invisible a week ago. Dylan with 48 yards rushing in that first half. The only touchdown went to Mike Vrabel. Coming in on offense, making the grab. Mike Martz, his team found Isaac Bruce for a score, but the Patriots lead it. They've won 28 straight when leading at halftime. We'll continue up to this work from your local station as you're watching the NFL on CBS. We are back in St. Louis with the Patriots leading the Rams 19-14. Jim Nance along with Phil Simms and Bonnie Bernstein. What are your thoughts there as we head to the second half? Well, a couple ways to look at it. For the New England Patriots, they got to be happy. They controlled the pace of play here. So they, they have the St. Louis Rams offense sitting on the sideline. For the Rams, they just got to find a way to get the New England offense off the field. All right, the numbers, do you see anything inside the numbers that stands out? No, nothing that really just, just came out. The, you know, the turnovers have, have been the big, the big difference. Tom Brady fumbling in his own end zone gave St. Louis one touchdown. But besides that, both teams, when given the opportunity, are moving it on offense. If you protect the quarterback, they're going to find somebody open down the field to make the throw. Arlen Harris gets it past the 20 with a flag. With a flag. 25-yard run back. Matt Chatham on the hit. So active on the special teams. During the return, holding by the receiving team, number 55. 
10 yard penalty. <laughs> Tough start coming for the Rams. They'll be back near the 10-yard line. This game got started with an open field goal by Vinatieri. And then a fumble of a Brady pass to make 7-6. Leonard Little landed on it for the touchdown. Brable caught a score for the Patriots. And then Bulger to Bruce to give the Rams the lead back, 14-13. But the half closed with an Adam Vinatieri field goal, his fourth of the first half. And a 19-14 lead as we begin the third quarter. St. Louis operates from its 12-yard line. Comes out with a double tight end formation. Cameron Cleland in the lineup. Fake to Falk. Look for the tight end. Wasn't open. And that ball bounces out. Incomplete. Joey Goodspeed was the target. Let's check in. What did you hear out there, Bonnie? Well, Jim, an injury update on Asante Samuel. Not really an update because the Patriots are still maintaining he's questionable to return with an arm injury. On the other side, the Rams, Mike Martz, very frustrated that his offense hasn't been able to take advantage of the weak secondary on the Patriots' side. But the thing, quite honestly, that he's most aggravated about, Jim, is the officiating. The Leonard Little roughing the passer, the questionable fumble with Mark Bulger. Uh, he really didn't want to talk about much else other than the Zebras after the half. All right, Bonnie, again, that was late in the half, and, well, the fumble and the late hit call on Little led to that last field goal for the Patriots. Second down, 10, an open space. That's Marshall Falk. Eugene Wilson finally ends the run after a gain of about 11. Fantasy Notebook. Let's see who piled up some numbers. 176 yards and a touchdown pass by Brady. And Bulger, 9 of 10. Corey Dillon, four yards a pop. Marshall Falk, 33 yards. He just added 11 to that total. Isaac Bruce and Corey Holt with Isaac Bruce catching the touchdown. Yeah, it was interesting. Listen to Bonnie Bernstein. She talked to Mike Martz, and you just think about what he is, his reputation. You know he's got to be frustrated with the passing game. Rookie Steve Jackson. Steven Jackson for a loss of a yard. Keith Trailer, Mike Vrabel. Mike March told us on Friday, he said, I have put in new routes, new routes for the wide receivers because the Patriots play a few defenses that we don't see during the year. And I know he was excited. And, you know, that's when I said in the first half, he goes, man, I just like to throw it every down because he knows they're weakened. They don't rush the passer real well. That's what he thought. But today they're they're pressuring Mark Bulger a little more than I think they would like him to like him to. Second down 11. Try out again. Go against that secondary. Teddy Bruschi says, no, you won't. Good example of it just that time. I mean, Teddy Bruschi, not really a, what I would call a good pass rushing linebacker, gets in there and he just catches, he catches Chris Dishman by surprise and just goes right around him and gets Mark Bolger for the sack. And a loss of nine, Teddy Bruschi who signed an extension in the offseason. And boy, talking about a coach's dream. He yep. said, I want to be a Patriot wearing number 54 my whole career. I am a Patriot. I don't want to be anywhere, play for anyone else. Yeah, that's right. He's, he was his own agent, which everybody go, well, when you have, what, what's the old saying? When, when you represent yourself, you have a fool for a client? <laughs> well, I don't think he feels that way. No, he's not. It, for him, it worked out the best way. He knows the market. He knew what was right and wrong. And, he went out there and got it done for himself. And third and 20 carry for about 10 yards will bring out Sean Landetta. It was Teddy Bruschi who was the captain of the All Sims team last year. He was Troy Brown, a wide receiver, now playing defensive back. And it's been fun watching him today be a defensive back. And boy, that's that's some tough double duty. Troy Brown doing it on offense to defense. Mike Vrabel, defense to offense. He looked over it. Sean McDonald a little bit, didn't he? And here's Sean Landetta, who was a Sims teammate on that uh, Giants Super Bowl winning team back in the uh, 1986 season. And Kevin Falk makes the catch at the 46. Back in 1986. The man's been doing it a long time. The Duke. We'll see the Patriots' first possession. We've got golf next weekend on CBS, the Franklin Templeton shootout. Greg... Norman, the host, and great host he is with a strong field. We'll have it next weekend. First down, Corey Dillon. 
or about three maybe four. And let's go check in again with Bonnie Bernstein. Well, Jim, Tom Brady shares the honor of going to the same high school, Sarah High School in California, as Barry Bonds and Lynn Swan. But by next Saturday, he will undoubtedly be the leading fundraiser. Brady decided to donate the Cadillac he won for being last year's Super Bowl MVP to the high school. They set up a website, www.tombradycar.com, to raffle it off. 25 bucks a pop, you can log on. And the cool thing is the entire Super Bowl team signed the underside of the hood. So that'll be a nice treat. And here is Brady firing on second and seven and picking up the first. Well, with there David he is. Givens. Uh, I'm sorry, Jim, it's, but Tom Brady throwing it right now when you saw him in high school. Looked like big old stretch in high school, <laughs> but still some of the same qualities. Very relaxed as he throws the football and what a strike over the middle. Patience and when the receivers on this turf, if they're not held up at the line of scrimmage, they can get down the field exceptionally fast. All but one catch this season for Givens, gaining a first down. And this one brings it to the 33. It's Dylan. Lost his footing for a moment. Recovers and gains 11. Tom Brady, class of 1995 at Sarah High School, 20 miles south of San Francisco in the San Mateo area. And look at some of the other Sarah School graduates. Barry Bonds and Lynn Swan. See Lynn with a football, a basketball, and jumping over a hurdle. Three-sport star, Hall of Famer. And TomBradyCard.com for your raffle ticket there as he raffles off and raises a lot of money for his high school. Class act. Here we go, first down, and it's Brady handing it off to Dillon. Down to the 15. Dillon running hard these last two plays. Let's get an update. We run it right back to New York and Greg Gumble. All right, Jim, Houston at Denver, and Jake Plummer's just having himself a heck of a day. This is going to go for a 23-yard touchdown to Kyle Johnson, Jake's fourth TD pass of the day, first ever meeting between these two teams. Denver's loving it, 31-7 in the third. Well, the Houston Texans, thank you, Greg, had come in looking for their first ever three game win streak. And Plummer just on fire with four touchdown passes. Patrick pass in the backfield for the Patriots on second and four. And they'll have a goal to go situation as Troy Brown with the grab for eight you, yards. You look at Troy Brown, and what did Tom Brady tell us last night? He's been out for a while, he comes back last week, and. It's like the guy hasn't been away. He goes, we just got it going right again. He goes, you know, I just feel comfortable when Troy Brown is in there. You trust him. And when you trust a wide receiver, you have a tendency. It's just subconscious. You have a tendency to look at him. If everything is equal, you're always going to throw it to the guy you trust the most. It's a lot of trust he's built up also this season with David Gibbons. He talked about that freely also. First and goal, Patrick pass. He leans forward for a gain of two. Brady is now over 200 yards on the game throwing. Well, it, it, Jim, you know, we, we go back. And, and, and I'm not a big time of possession guy because I think it's so misleading when you look at football games by the style of uh, offense that you play. But it wasn't going to be misleading today. The Patriots wanted to control the pace, keep the Rams offense over on the sideline, let them lose their rhythm, and they are just taking their time and methodically marching down the field again. Down in this area where Daniel Graham is so tough, third or second down, second down and goal. Brady with a lot of pressure just gets rid of it as Leonard Little forced the action. The Rams, you look at their numbers from the season, have had a hard time containing the opposition's tight end. Given up 38 balls to tight ends, including Randy McMichael, just ate him alive last week. But so far today, they've shut down the starting tight ends. Just Mike Vrabel, when he came in, lined up as one and scored a touchdown. Well, when you're selling out to stop the run, the one guy that's easiest to throw it to is the tight end because he's so close to the quarterback. Now it's third and goal, midway, third quarter. Fake the pitch to pass. Now they'll go back to him. And ridden down hard, Travis Fisher along with Tommy Pauley. And Adam Vinatieri is getting quite a workout. 
He's going to come out for a fifth try of the day. It's four for four. The bend, but don't break defense. The Rams are kind of using the New England Patriots staple against them, and it's kept them in this football game. Look at this. They fake. They snap at the Vinatieri. who throws the touchdown pass to Troy Brown. Everybody just stunned. Where did that come from? <laughs> Troy Brown comes in as the receiver on the left side. They snap it back to the kicker, and he finds Troy Brown open for a touchdown. What a play. Now, you can't sneak off the sideline and come on the field, but since Troy Brown was on the field before the play. And they're talking about it. It's not misleading. Side. It's not a misleading. It's not deceptive. He was on the field and walked over there and lined up. Touchdown. That's all they were doing, Jim. Ed Hockley was just making sure that Troy Brown was in the game the play before. They stop it where you can be on the bench and sneak off or sneak onto the field and be like one yard on and nobody sees you. That is illegal. That's unsportsmanlike conduct. But nice play. Caught us all by surprise. So Vinatieri now with the extra point. We can't believe it here in St. Louis. Vinatieri has kicked four field goals and thrown a touchdown pass. Adam Vinatieri with his first career pass in the NFL in his ninth year. It goes for a touchdown. And, you know, Jim, real quick, Troy Brown was on the sideline, but he came on. They'll start at the 20. As Vinatieri puts the Patriots up 26-14. Here comes Troy Brown from the bench. He gets inside the numbers. Then he slowly walks out to outside. Watch the Ram players. They just start counting to make sure that they have 11 defenders. Nobody looks outside to see Troy Brown to the top. Adam Vinatieri. He's cool. Makes perfect throw. Well, they got that ball in play. No Talking about the officials real quick, too. I, I wonder if New England alerted them that the play was coming. First down, pitch outside. It's McDonald for about six. You, you know, Jim, I want to go back. Bill Belichick, when I was with the New York Giants in 1979, he was the special teams coach. And we stunk on offense. So we were unbelievably creative on special teams. We had trick plays every single week and throw it to the punter, bounce the football across the field on kickoff returns. So those type of plays, I'm sure he's passed them along to Brad Seeley, the special teams coach. And what perfect timing they had it set up. I'm sure the team was alerted and the officials, and that's why it worked. Second down for Bulger. The run out of the pocket, pick up the first down. But Tom Brady is cool and calm, and, oh, he likes it. He says, hey, I'm not the only guy that can throw touchdowns around. <laughs> Adam Vinatieri's going, I make all the big field goals, and I have a perfect quarterback rating. I think if uh, this were Thanksgiving, uh, I would think Adam Vinatieri might have a chance to no, get the no. All-Iron Award, huh? No, no, no. Kitchens, no. Even when you're throwing touchdowns? Yeah, but that was easy, Jim. You could have thrown that one. Uh, maybe. First and ten, and lost away. As again, this Patriots secondary. What a job! Mm, you talk about depleted group of uh, individuals with Ty Law, Ty Pool, Asante Samuel, who started. He was really the third corner on the season. So now you're back down to Randall Gay and Earthwind Moreland just signed off the practice squad this week. And what did Bill Belichick say to us? I said, you know, I tried to phrase the question. He goes. We'll do what we can. And that's that was it. So but they're they are doing what they can. They're being physical, but really a lot of they're covering well, but the big guys up front are putting some pressure on Bolger too. Let's see how the Rams respond. Second down ten. And up across the middle, picked off. Picked off by Roman Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer inside the 30 and down to the 21. 25 yard run back. Ball deflected by Willie McGinnis. What do the Rams love to do more than anything else? They like to throw it inside the deep end cuts. Mark Bulger is going to throw up in this area. Look at the defenders around it. There's one underneath, one in front, one behind, and Roman Pfeiffer comes up with the tip. 
It's the third turnover of the day committed by St. Louis. Take away the team's strength. That's what you always want to do on defense. Like right away you say, well, if the Rams like to throw it inside, if nothing else, let's take away those deep end cuts. They haven't taken away all day, but that time they were ready for it and they get the interception. And let's take the crowd out of it also. Well, they were never in it. Quiet crowd. The dome here is not near as loud as it used to be years ago. First down 10 from the 21. Go for the big ball early. Well, the pressure prevents that, so they dump it short. And Dylan is tackled at the 16. Leonard Little again creating pressure on the quarterback. Let's check out the NFL.com poll. Who would you pick as the NFL's midseason MVP? You can cast your vote at NFL.com. What do you think? Some guys putting up some unbelievable numbers this year. But you got to take a guy, when you say MVP, it's got to be with a team that's winning. I, I, Peyton Manning is just going unnoticed. I don't know why. I guess we're getting used to the astounding numbers, but that would be my pick right now. Well, his Colts have lost three games. They have, they've also won five, I think, right? Yes, well, they'll, they'll go for five tomorrow against oh, okay. Minnesota. And here you see Dylan step ahead for three yards. He has put up phenomenal numbers. McNabb was on that list, and they suffer their first loss today. Terrell Owens. You know, he has, he has truly made a difference coming from the 49ers to the Philadelphia Eagles. <laughs> we had to laugh when we saw that little confrontation he had with McNabb because we were there in the preseason. We talked to him. That's right. And we said, will you conduct yourself the right way? Well, as long as I'm catching passes and we're winning. <laughs> today, <laughs> okay. well, today's the first day they're not winning. But he had something to say to his quarterback. Well, he's consistent. Third down and three for the Patriots. Quick slant, first down at the five-yard line with David Givens. It's interesting. Two ways to play the game. The New England Patriots, you've already seen that play a couple times today. Everybody to the right, fake the run to the right, throw the slant pass to the backside. There's no defenders, no underneath coverage. Then you talk about the St. Louis Rams. They're famous for never repeating plays. They run it once, they go on to the next one. The Patriots, they'll go back to back and run the same play. Well, then if that's the case, let's bring out Vinatieri and throw a pass right now. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> From about right here, five yard line, first and goal. And Dylan will step in for the touchdown. Corey Dillon. He got away from Dewan Gross and goes in with ease. Pretty impressive. Corey Dillon's going, man, I like this turf. Set up by Roman Pfeiffer's interception. Pfeiffer's first pick in three seasons leads to a Corey Dillon run from five yards out. You've got to come up and be aggressive and attack him. Otherwise, he'll run you over. Then you're so aggressive, he makes a nice little stop, cuts inside, and basically goes untouched into the end zone. Well, Vinatieri adds another point. 20 unanswered by the Patriots. The lead, 33-14. 33-14 New England. Patriots have had the ball for 23 minutes versus 18 for the Rams. It's coming off of a week when the Patriots held the football for only 17 minutes. Their lowest total and champs to bring down Arlen Harris at the 26. Adam Vinatieri. What a performance. Booting four field goals. And throw on a touchdown pass. There you go, the most accurate passer in the NFL. <laughs> We're back in St. Louis. First down for the Rams from the 27. Getting steamrolled here in the last quarter. And they complete the ball, the pass on first down to Torrey Holt for 12. 20 unanswered by the Patriots. Think about the Patriots today. They throw a touchdown pass to linebacker Mike Vrabel, and their kicker, Adam Vinatieri, throws a touchdown to Troy Brown. Unconventional indeed, as we have Bulger throwing again on first down for another completion, and they'll move the chains once more. Sean McDonald with the grab. Well, they're going to the hurry up offense. When you're down 19 points, you need to change it, of course, and change the momentum. 
give the quarterback a little more time by putting him in the shotgun. Then hopefully you, you'd like to tire out the defensive line. Troy Brown is back in in the secondary. He's getting double duty today as Marshall Falk gets hit from behind. Gain of eight. Rodney Harrison with the tackle. And Tully Banakane also. Second down and two as they continue the hurry up mode. Two minutes to go, third quarter, down 19. Well, they're going to get them back in the huddle now. You know, we're in that hurry up offense when the quarterback gets under the center and the running backs behind him. It's a pretty good giveaway that it's going to be a run. Watch Troy Brown. He is manning up against Sean McDonald in the slot to the left. Second down and two. Deflected at the line. And can you imagine Troy Brown coming up with an interception? Put that one in the stat book. Almost yeah. did. The whole New England Patriots sideline all jumped up <laughs> because they know what's going on there. And that's about the fourth or fifth time I've seen this exact route where Troy Brown is running across the field covering Sean McDonald. And, hey, come on. He's a wide receiver. Look, you've seen it about four times. He's going to go underneath and look for the interception and might have had it. If the ball wasn't tipped, he's got better hands when he plays on offense. <laughs> I don't know what happens when he goes to the other side. Hey, shoot, you get nervous. Third down you and two. You don't want to get embarrassed. Could be a draw. Well, timeout called by the Rams. Third and two on the way. Down 19. And it's Adam Vinatieri starring today. He's on the sidelines and seeing all kinds of different ways of trying to win a game today put up by New England. Good passer rating, though. Quarterback rating of 122.9. Oh, man. He'll talk about that for about the next three or four weeks. But look at this situation. I think this is a huge part of the game because the Rams defense has shown they're not going to get, get off the field too fast against the New England offense. I would think the Rams would run it because this is definitely four down territory. They shift around. They put Falk on a wing to the right. Passing formation. Third and two. And they come around with McDonald getting the look at this. What a disaster. Wow. Willie McGinnis and Earth Wind Moreland just brought up from the practice squad contribute to a seven yard loss. Yeah, I understand what you're doing. You're expecting them to play aggressive on the defense and chase you. But look, nobody's playing man to man. Earthwind, they're, that's why they're in such good position. They're looking into the backfield, waiting to see what happens. So they are not fooled, and they get the tackle for the loss. And they're uh, going for it here as we approach a minute to go third quarter. Fourth down and nine. Now they're going to play man to man. Holger gets away from Banakane. Pass complete for the first down, but there is a flag. This is Holt running around. Bruce throws a block. And he steps out at the 25, but we see a pair of flags on the field. Could be offsetting, holding on the offense, illegal contact on the defense, and we have a third penalty down here by the tackle. Boy, this was. There were fouls by both teams on the play. Holding offense, number 77. There was also holding defense, number 37. The penalty's offset. Replay the down. Replay the down. Fourth down. Now another linesman comes over and says, hold on. There was also a flag thrown in on the tackle when they yes. bumped the hold out of bounds. Anybody else who threw a After flag? After the play was over, there was taunting, unsportsmanlike conduct by both teams. Offense, number 81. Defense, number 42. Those penalties offset. Three point fourth down. <laughs> That's four by my count. This is the taunting to Dexter Reed, Torrey Holt. Well, they're just having double pop. Now they oh. get a couple more. I, I, you know, Torrey Holt was just doing it, I think, in a good sportsmanlike manner there. That's the way I took it, but maybe he was saying something that 
wasn't real kind. You met with Torrey Holt. It doesn't seem like a, a guy that gets no, upset at a whole lot. I've never. He's the happiest football player I've ever been around, and I've been around him quite a bit. Enjoys what he does. Why not? Wide receiver for the St. Louis Rams with his talent, I'd smile a lot too. He'd enjoy it a lot more if he could find a way to help this team pick up a first down on fourth and nine. And Bulger has the open man. First down. That's Isaac Bruce for 17. Well, that was awfully tough on Troy Brown. All the receivers are to the right. They cross each other. Troy Brown is not used to seeing this. He gets caught up in the mess. Watch him come underneath. Oh, Troy Brown says, uh oh, I got him. It's, <laughs> hey, it doesn't look this complicated when I'm running down the field, so. There's a lot to learn, a lot to know when you're trying to be a defensive back against a team that does multiple plays, formations, and they cross receivers. Look at Troy bouncing around. Brown remains in on defense. First down, they swing it to Falk. He will step out. Moreland had the angle on him. Only three yards gained, 21 seconds to go third quarter. Tonight on CBS, folks, this is a big one. The cast of Dallas is back. The biggest reunion special in TV history. The Ewings back together again. All the Ewings are there, including Patrick. All right. Not Patrick Ewing, but Patrick Duffy. I got and it. And that's I can, I can tonight. That was probably one of the few things I watched, Jim. I know. I Get done on a Thursday night at football, run home. My wife and I, we watched Dallas. I thought it was Friday night, wasn't it? Oh, okay. Second <laughs> down. <laughs> And Falk with another catch for a short game. You sure you were watching? I was watching. That was Knott's Landing you were watching. I watched that too. Timeout on the field into the third quarter. We're going to start the fourth quarter in St. Louis as the Rams try to do something here positive in the second half. Third quarter went all New England. Ninth play of a drive coming up, including a big conversion on a fourth and nine. And they'll start the final quarter down 33-14 football at the Patriots 23. Third and five for Bulger. Who started this game nine of nine, but little success thereafter. First down. Marshall Falk for seven. Running behind Timmerman and Williams. Well, that was a good call because I think still the Rams and Mark Bulge, you got to think. Look at the scoreboard 33 to 14. You're down 19 points. A field goal gets you within two scores, but that's two touchdowns, two, two extra points. It, you got to be thinking touchdown here, unless it's just a terrible fourth down situation. And it was the first third down conversion of the game for the Rams. First down from the 16. Bulger with time back in the end zone and double coverage, including Rodney Harrison and Earthwind Moreland on Torrey Holt. Tuesday night, country's biggest night. It's the superstars of country music. Tim McGraw, Gretchen Wilson, Faith Hill, Rascal Flatts, and Shania Twain, and a whole lot more. Brooks and Dunn will host the Country Music Awards live this Tuesday at 8, 7 Central on America's Most Watched Network. Kevin Curtis sent to the left side in a slot. From the shotgun, Bulger operates second down and 10. the whole way looking for Holt he has it touchdown St. Louis Earthwind Moreland had the coverage but he didn't look up now will they go for two coming in down 19 you would think two touchdowns two twos and a field goal here is the touchdown what a yeah. catch too by Holt. Yeah what a throw by Mark Bulger I when he threw it I said oh that's the wrong place to throw the football but he he did the right thing. He put some pace on the ball where the defender did not have time to turn around and look for it. You got to like this call right now. It's the math is this is what you have to do now. Yeah you just think you're 13 down you want to make it 11 and if you get it to 11 that's a touchdown. 
two point conversion and a field goal. So I like it. And if they miss it, it does not hurt them. Because a field goal by the Patriots puts them at 36. They can still score two with the two touchdowns and the two two point conversions and two touchdowns. You know what the Patriots score you win. So there's a lot of scenarios and what I'm trying to say is excellent decision right here. It all adds up. Two point try. They'll go on the ground. Falk lowering the shoulder. And they say he got it. They say he crossed the plane. And that was close. Well, as far as we were away, it looked like he did get into the end zone. Let's take a look. Does any part of that football break the plane? A little different look. Ooh, mm, it's close. But again, I don't think there's enough evidence there to overturn it if it wanted to be challenged. It could be challenged by Bill Belichick. He's got the red flag in his hand, Belichick. New England is challenging the ruling on the field that it was a good, the guy was in for a touch for a try for point. Well, you're hearing the announcement here. It's going to be challenged. It was uh, just thrown, the red flag by Belichick. It took him a while. He wanted to get word upstairs. What did you see, Phil? Well, here's from the backside. When, when I saw this, one, I go, okay, it looks like he's got the football in his right arm, and it might have got over the, the goal line. But from the other side, it's, it's close. Just has to touch the plane. They'll look at it upstairs and downstairs. We're back here in the Gateway City and Bill Belichick challenging the two point conversion. And here's the verdict. New England has challenged the ruling on the field that the ball penetrated the goal on the try for point. After reviewing the play, the ruling stands as called. The try for point was good. New England is charged with their first time out. So they'll lose a timeout. And again, I just don't think there's enough evidence to say clearly that he didn't cross the plane. The other side here, it's close. Yeah, it's just so close. It's I don't know how you could decide one way or the other, but it was called a touchdown on the field. From that angle, you'd say, okay, probably did it. But when you see the football in his arms from the other side, so close, but you're right, Jim. The result, we have an 11-point game, and this is a Rams team that earlier this season pulled off the second-best comeback in NFL history, down 17 to Seattle with Bethel Johnson. Wide open gap. Bethel Johnson with a flag thrown. Tackled at the 47 by the kicker, Jeff Wilkins. Oh. Oh, big penalty. 20 yard line, half the distance to the goal. During the return, illegal block in the back by the receiving team number 30. Half the distance to the goal, New England keeps the ball, first down. Ball on Gerard Cherry. Last five possessions, they've all led the points. Three touchdowns and a pair of field goals. So the 39 yard run back by Bethel Johnson nullified Patriots start at the 10. Brady faking into the line and almost picked off. He was looking for Daniel Graham and Tino E. Samoa could have made a huge play in this game. The number one thing they always say quarterback look in front of the receiver. Tom Brady runs this play a lot and Tino Isamoa comes off of where he was. He saw Tom Brady looking up the field. He comes across the field and just misses the interception. Mm. Now the crowd comes to life and this is the end of the field where it got so boisterous for Brady in the first half he fumbled and was recovered for a touch. Second and ten and Dylan for about three maybe four. You need pressure on the quarterback. You got the crowd. You got a good situation. Troy Brown back in on offense at the top of your screen. They put the tight end to Leonard Little side to make sure he's not going to be a factor. And a double teaming. Third and six. Brady steps up, zips it, and incomplete. The Rams will get the ball back. He was looking for Troy Brown. 
Well, they double team Leonard Little. He's so quick and so fast on this surface. He makes Tom Brady step up so hard that he loses a little bit control of the football and he throws it a little high. Ooh, Tommy Pauly came in late. Yeah, headbutt him down. A little headbutt, wasn't it? Yeah, with the face. A ram butt. So that drive only used up a minute and 15 seconds. Miller. Looking away to McDonald. He retreats at first and now moves forward and out of bounds at the 40. Excellent starting position for Boldry. Drove him last time. Down 11. St. Louis will have it at its own 40. Thirteen minutes remaining in St. Louis. Yeah, you, you warned everybody. This team, 17 points down, six minutes to go against the Seattle Seahawks. Came back to win it in overtime on the road. Yep, different team, different defense. Down 19 to start this fourth quarter. Hardy with a touchdown drive and a two. And Bulger gets away from the heat. And this will be a short game, but it could have been a sack. Manu Maliuna with the catch. And for those expecting to see 60 minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS. And the game between the Patriots and the Rams, a rematch of Super Bowl 36. Bulger completes that to his tight end. Asante Samuel has come back into the game for the Patriots. He's at the bottom of your screen. And that pass broken up by Troy Brown with a flag thrown. It's going to be a penalty because it's a face shield. He jumps up, throws his arms up, does not turn around and find the football. Defense number 80 not playing the ball. The ball is placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic down. Watch Troy Brown, though. I'll tell you, it's pretty impressive. Oh, he did try to turn a little it bit. Did. Just not enough, but. He is doing some job. Again, we're here at the Dome in the gateway city of St. Louis. As teams from St. Louis and the Boston area meet again, as they did in the Super Bowl. Here it's the Patriots leading 33-22. Big day by their kicker, Adam Vinatieri. Four field goals, and he's thrown a touchdown. And here, Richard Seymour gets to Bolger and Vince Wilfrick. That is just, they are just overpowering the Ram offensive line. McGinnis on the other, Richard Seymour, 93. Vince Wilfork, 75. It's a race. Richard Seymour wins. Does he get a half a sack? Do they share it, or do you give it all to Seymour? Well, they'll argue in the film room tomorrow, but I don't know what they're going to put up. I would say Richard Seymour is going to get the sack. That is overall the fifth sack by New England today by five different players. Second down 20. And Bulger going to the big ball for Holt. Ooh, and he actually may have just misjudged that a little bit. Yeah, he did. And Mark Bulger waited just a little too long to throw it out there. He threw it about uh, 55 yards or more. Torrey Holt watching. Come inside. He knows he might be double teamed. Look. And then he breaks it back to the outside. If Mark Bulger would have got it out there a little quicker and thrown it to the sideline more, Torrey Holt would have made the catch. So again, Asante Samuel is back on the field. Eugene Wilson, he's gone throughout. There's Samuel. He's been out really for almost three quarters. Yeah, I would One. think he just can't tackle somebody, Jim. That's what where his shoulder would be a problem. Injured his shoulder on the third play of the game by the Patriot defense. This is Falk getting away from Roman Pfeiffer with a flag on the field. And Falk is tackled at the 35, but it's going to come back, it appears. Something else, so third and 20. Short pass, they picked up the first down. Holding offense number 77. 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. Called on Grant Williams, the former Patriot. Watch the right tackle. And this is what's happening to him all day. The, the Ram offensive line, especially on the edges, they're just, they're, 
They're backing up and the Patriots are just power rushing. No moves, just run them over. And they're crushing the pocket and Mark Bulgers, he's having a hard time looking down the field, finding the receivers. Well, here's a number for you, third and 30. Well, I think they're going to try, they're going to throw something that gives them a chance to pick it up. Harrison blitzing. Pass, long man open, and just short of the target. Kevin Curtis with Troy Brown defending. It's a blitz. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage everywhere. Rodney Harrison coming free. Grant Williams trying to save his quarterback. Troy Brown knows it's an all-out blitz. And if Kevin Curtis would have looked just a little quicker, it would have been a completion. You know, the last time Rodney Harrison was in this building and going after a quarterback number 10, he really changed the course of the Rams' history. It was a preseason game of August of 99. He was a charger, was Harrison. And he came in and hit Trent Green. Tore an ACL green. That brought in a guy named Kurt Warner. Now on the run back, Kevin Falk. Falk to the 37. So just inside 11 minutes to go. And it's an 11-point lead. First down, Patriots leading by 11. 11 minutes remaining. Corey Dillon running free. Corey Dillon to the 50 and into St. Louis territory. 15-yard run zigging and zagging past the linebackers. You think those penalties by the St. Louis Rams weren't big? It changed field position. It took the crowd out of the game completely. There's no noise. And now the Patriots, hey, you're, little, you're more relaxed when you get away from that goal line. And they call a running play, and they just stone everybody up front, knock them out of the way, and Corey Dillon gets another first down. Remember, Dillon had 100-yard performances his last two outings. He set out last week with a thigh injury. Seven away from 100 today. Oh, nice move. And a lot of work for two yards. Leonard Little on the hit. A week ago, this team had only six rushing attempts, tying the all-time low in NFL history of the Chicago Cardinals. Set the mark in 1933. They matched it. Today, 22 attempts. They had five yards rushing, second lowest in the history of the franchise. Today, over 100 on the ground and all with Dylan, the bulk of it. Three tight ends on second down and eight. Dylan again steps outside and picks up two. And we're going to give you an update. Back to you, Greg Gumbel in New York. All right, Jim, Houston at Denver. Dominic Davis with a one-yard touchdown run, his second of the day. The two-point conversion failed, but this has all the makings of a Bronco victory with just over four minutes to play. It's 31-13 Denver. Jim and Phil. All right, thank you, Greg. And Ruben Drones has another 100-yard game today for the Broncos. Broncos and Seahawks are looking down the road at a matchup December the 5th as the Chargers... Uh, I said Seahawks, the Chargers and the Broncos starring in the AFC West. Third down six, pass across the middle. What a grab by Gibbons for 12. Well, you know, we talked to Tom Brady last night, and he just talked about David Gibbons. And, you know, he says David Gibbons has gotten in more because of the injuries. Deion Branch was hurt. Troy Brown was hurt. He got in there, and he said he's taking advantage of the opportunity. He plays big. He's able to use his body, shield off the defender. And that time, not a good throw by Tom Brady, yeah. but Givens reaches out and makes a very tough catch. And he has 100 yards for the third straight game. He's the first Patriot to do that since Ben Coates 10 years ago. Patrick Pass on first down for a gain of four. Let's go back to Greg in New York. All right, Jim, it's all over in San Francisco. Shootout won by the Seattle Seahawks. Matt Hasselbeck, one of his three touchdown passes on the day. This one to Corin Robinson, but the Seahawks, very impressive in Frisco. 42-27 is the final. All right, Greg, thank you. And, Steve, and Sean Alexander out there, another monster day with 160 yards on the ground and a pair of scores. So the Seahawks win on the road. 
Patriots time trying to do that here in St. Louis. Midway fourth. Second and six. Patrick pass into the open and down at the 10. Dan Copen with a great block that led to 19 yards. Boy, it really was. You're talking Matt Light. Daniel Graham gets a good job on the outside. Matt Light kicks out. Copen, the center, pulls out. He gets a good block, and Patrick Pass set it up perfectly. He makes you think he's going outside. He cuts it back in. Another first down, and that's the sign of a team that can run the football. When you line up at the end of a game with the lead, everybody knows you're going to run it, and you still get it done. Pass has given this team a lift today also after missing two games with an injury. Returning today, 57 total yards. Dylan, first and goal at the 10. Going outside and bumped out by Aeneas Williams. That was good for six. And that gives Corey Dillon 100 yards for a third straight game he's participated in. You know, it's amazing, doesn't it, Jim? You, you, you're a fan. We're both fans. But when Corey Dillon is the main guy, all of a sudden, Patrick Pass and Kevin Falk, you, you notice them more because they're in their role with their comfort level. But when you take them out of it and make them the, the number one guy, it, it ruins everything. So it's the old trickle down effect. Lose the top guy, it affects the two and three. Second and goal, and look at Dylan. Finally taken down. Butler got him by the ankles. Six minutes left. No gain on that one. Third and goal coming up for the Patriots. A touchdown would seal it for the Patriots. If you kick a field goal, you're only up 14. And of course, then the St. Louis Rams are still in it. Now they bring in Bethel Johnson. Dylan, the single back. Sorry, running back is behind the quarterback. Third and goal, fake Dylan. Across the middle. Touchdown, Bethel Johnson. His first of the season. And the Patriots, they run this play a lot. And it just keeps working. When you run the football well, nice fake. Nobody covering Bethel Johnson in the end zone. Good touch by Tom Brady. The Patriots are really, really good inside the five with play action fakes and passes. Took five and a half minutes on the clock for that drive to all but ice it. Vinatieri adds one more. Bethel Johnson has his first touchdown of the season. Third career, and the Patriots are up 18. Adam Vinatieri, he's had quite a day. Four field goals. How did you like the, the motion on that pass? Uh, it was a very, very good motion for a kicker. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, no, it was all right. Listen, I'll tell you. It, it, his throw motion looked a lot better than my kicking motion would be in an uh, NFL game. Now, there you go. What a rebound for the Patriots today, though. After last week, just physically getting dominated, nothing going their way, mistakes, couldn't run the ball. We showed the graphic of all the negative. Uh, stats that went their way and, and to come back today Jim decimated and for this effort and to do it in this environment and decimated in that secondary and going against the fun and gun and all that you get with St. Louis they've overcome injuries so much in the past and won two Super Bowls they just they, they don't they do not let adversity destroy their football team that's one of their greatest attributes Harris high steps to the 25. Let's go back to New York for the update. All right, Jim, to final in San Diego. They knocked off the Saints. Drew Brees, four touchdown passes today, including that seven-yarder to Antonio Gates. The Chargers are 6-3 and three with a 43-17 win over New Orleans, guys. Thank you, Greg. How about that? That's what we're talking about. Look at the Chargers, who will have a bye next week. And Denver... You know what's on its way to a win also. What's amazing about the Chargers, it's not that they're six and three, it's how they're doing it. They are just, hey, 
They're putting some whippings on some people. And Drew Brees, hey, cut him, get rid of him before the season. Marty Schottenheimer is going to be fired. I was probably leaving that brigade. But Run them both out of town, right? Been wrong in a lot of things in my life, and it'll continue. But boy, oh boy, Marty Schottenheimer's done a good job. Upside defense, unabated to the quarterback. Number 55, five yard penalty. First down. So we saw those standings out west with the Chargers six and three and about to be joined by the Broncos who are beating up on Houston today. And again, they'll have their first matchup, those two, about uh, four weeks out in San Diego. And you, you know, you've never imagined that the Chargers could put up 43 points on a day when Tomlinson. Yeah, I think averages two yards a carry, 36 yards, nothing. That shows you how this team has really grown. And Bolger downfield and uh, was over the head of Holt and dangerously close to being picked. Now, what about the AFC East with the Jets coming off the big Monday night win, falling flat today to Buffalo? Well, I don't know if they fell flat. They just went up to a, uh, against a, a team that was deceiving with their record. And, and you know Buffalo is one of the worst places to play in the NFL the crowd the, the weather it makes it tough so that was going to be a tough game for them but the Patriots they showed why they are the Super Bowl champions and, and Jim we talked about it they come in here and they just overcome a lot of obstacles that were in their way and found a way to get it done second and five that'll get them another set of downs but Donald bumped out by Moreland. Well, the Patriots, remember, their 21-game win streak ended a week ago in Pittsburgh, and today they're going to start a new one. And they'll go next back to Foxborough for Buffalo, a team that's won three of its last four, and then at Kansas City. Not easy games. Don't look at the record. They're three and five. Both those teams, don't look. Especially you're looking at Buffalo. Physical. We saw that first matchup with the Bills, and that was a, a close one until a late fumble forced by... Bruski was picked up and run back 68 yards for a touchdown by Richard Seymour to win the game. False start, offense number 10, five yard penalty, still first down. You know, you know, Jim, I, I, I think about this game and we talked to Tom Brady, you know, last night and we asked, well, how are the coaches, you know, this past week? And he goes, well, they were bad this week because we were bad, but that made us feel kind of good. Yeah, he liked that. Yeah, you know, good. It made us feel kind of good because, see, our coaches are always mad, no matter if we win or lose. So, and I went, okay, I think I got it. At least, at least there was a reason to be miserable. Yeah, that's how he framed it. Yeah, that's right, miserable. That's the word. So, that's how they are. They don't get up and down. They're the same way all the time. Just in 15, and it's Marshall Falk. I thought I was talking to Yogi Berra there for a second. This is Yogi's hometown. Oh, that's right, St. Louis. But this, it's, uh, it really is the depth, the ability just not to get sidetracked. Don't feel sorry for yourself. Because, you know, it's the old saying, nobody cares if you got a lot of guys hurt. Nobody cares. Back over to McDonald, and uh, he failed to estimate exactly where he needed to go to get the first down. It's third and one on the way. 4.23 remaining. I'll say this about the NFC West as you look at the standings. Mike Martz kind of told us and put it in, in really in a good frame of mind. He goes, look, we're not worried about our record and where we're going to all that. We're just worried. We just want to win the NFC West. Just concentrate on those teams. Let's beat them because that's all that matters. Hey, if you go 7-9 and nine and it's the best record in your, your division, you go to the playoffs. They're down one with a flag. Bolger maybe a free down. Got a man hanging out on the sidelines. It's Holt with the grab at the 13. That might be offsides against the Patriots. 35-yard hookup. Talking about Mike Martz, he had never lost coming off a bye. Offside, defense number 59. The penalty is declined. First down. So the big gain is a go. Martz was 4-0 and coming off a bye, and they do things differently in a bye week than anybody else, and it's always worked until this week. Well, that's right. Yeah, they do. He just makes the players work out. You see Torrey Holt going down the sideline, again, way down the field, good protection. Yeah, he just makes the players work out. Doesn't take them on the football field and practice them, but they came back after the week off on Monday, full pads, and he says they got after it. So he was really, his mood was tremendous. Great spirits. He thought his team was going to come in here and play not just good, really well today. That's what he was expecting. 
first down pass back to fall. Makes the dance move down at the 10. Yeah, Mark said with my fingers crossed we're kind of coming out of the bye I believe with a lot of things falling into place and he's been saying he's been consistent all year he thought this team by the second half of the year would really be going strong. Here's the problem when you watch this team and I'm not second guessing because I said it to you and we just don't. I think they did beat up a little too much up on both sides. Good offensive line but he gets pushed around. And nice effort. Kevin Curtis. And did he touch the pylon? That's what they're discussing. I did not think it, it didn't look like he got any body part over the goal line. They give it well, oh, the arms kind of halfway up. The ball hit the pylon in the player's possession, which by rule is a touchdown. There you go. That's it. Kevin Curtis with the touchdown. He's inbounds as he jumps. Yes, it looks like he is, and he reaches. Oh, what a job. What about his feet? Never saw it, dude. Both feet stay inbounds. Uh -oh, oh, no. Uh -oh, uh oh, Here comes a flag, the red flag. Three yard line. Here it comes. See if, how far he can toss it. That was a good one. That was just okay. Got that one going about 15 yards. Vinatieri like. <laughs> New England has challenged the ruling on the field of the touchdown. And they're going to challenge and they're going to win it. You got to think. They are. Watch the receiver. Watch the right foot. No, the left foot it is. Yep. One inside. It is clearly out on the three yard line. Ball could be placed just inside. Under the curtain for Hockley. How about the, the the Belichick toss? Well, I've seen Bill Belichick throw many, many footballs in practice. It's not bad. Him and Adam Ben and Terry were working out together this week, I guess. <laughs> but you know, some of the there there wasn't any anger or frustration there, mainly because of the score. It shouldn't take long. And the Rams will be set up at the three yard line, it appears. The score will get knocked back down to 40 22 if the call goes the way that, uh, talking about indisputable evidence, yeah. that replay defines that, just hey, that. I got to tell you, I was going 40 to 28. Did I miss something? <laughs> yeah. Wait, if they get a You're touchdown here, this game's not over. <laughs> I, I was really confused. I was getting ready to say, I think we got the score wrong. And uh, Ed Hockley just taking, a, I'm sure, an extra moment to make sure they know where to spot the football. Well, it's about time, where to spot it, and what down. The runner stepped out of bounds on the three yard line before the ball hit the pylon. Therefore, the ball will be spotted at the three yard line. It does result in a first down for St. Louis. There are no timeouts charged. Randall Gay coming up and helped force them out. And there's the foot, the left foot out back at the three. Right foot, for the record, was also, it appears, out at the two. Doesn't matter. They'll have a first down, first and goal at the three. 60 minutes coming up for everybody except for those of you on the West Coast. This is a St. Louis team that is accustomed to not only putting up a lot of points at home, but knowing how to really go full throttle here and put away opponents, having won 16 of the last 17 regular season games inside this building. Yeah, you know what goes unnoticed? We Everybody gets blinded. Their offense, the scoring, all this stuff. When they had those tremendous teams, their defense was pretty dang good. Their defense doesn't live up to what it had been in the past. for about two. Well, their defense underwent some changes this year. They lost some players, plus they lost their coordinator, Lovey Smith. Went to Chicago Bears. They lost probably, you know, when you have Leonard Little on one side and Grant Winstrom on the other side rushing the passer, he went to Seattle. That, that just changes everything. Not really in any hurry here, are they? 
Second and goal. Again, it's Falk, and again, it's not going to work. Teddy Johnson makes the play for a loss of three. Yeah, I know they're they're not rushing things, and it's one of the pet peeves. And Mike Martz has gotten a lot of uh, criticism. Their clock management over the years, especially the use of timeouts, has not been good. Ted Johnson, we talked about it last week and the week before. He is really good in short yardage situations and down on the goal line. Well, they are really taking their time as we approach 2.30 remaining in the game. And the Patriots leading by 18. Now they take a timeout with one second on the play clock. That is hard to understand. Yeah, it is. And you know what? If there were more people here, the boos would be louder. And they're, they're, they're deserved. I mean, why in the world with 11 minutes to go in the game are you in hurry up, up and down the field trying to stay in it? And here you are with some three minutes to go on the clock, and you just run the down clock all the way down to one second and then take a timeout. What do you think? I mean, if you're on the field right now, you're still trying to think of every conceivable way you can win a game. And one way, the only way you're going to do it is by conserving some time. Yeah, that's right. Well, you know, listen, I, I, I presume the coaches are thinking that way, too, but they just didn't execute it very well. We welcome those of you who saw the Broncos today beat the. Houston Texans 31 13. We have a third and goal to go here for the Rams. With two and a half remaining. And a flag down as they go back over to the tight end. Manu Maliona. And Moreland prevents him from making it all the way to the end zone. Holding. And for those just joining us, the Rams had it first and goal at Holding the three. Offense number 66, 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. So they'll repeat third down and they'll go all the way back to the 16 yard line. Third and goal from the 16. They had it first and goal at the three. Look at Christy, uh, number 66, Chris Dishman on the inside. He's all, oh, look at that right hand, pulls the jersey of Richard Seymour. In this game, again, for the audience that saw the Denver Broncos improve their record, joining the Chargers out west, six and three marks. We had Adam Vinatieri with four field goals for the Patriots, plus he threw a touchdown. Bolger on the run and fires it out of bounds. We also had Mike Vrabel of the Patriots, their linebacker, line up on offense as he did in the Super Bowl this past February, and he caught a touchdown in the second quarter. You know, I saw Mike Vrabel during the offseason, and I was having a little fun with him. I said, hey, Mike, I thought you deserved that MVP trophy of the, of the game. Oh, I told I, And he got all <laughs> excited. Tom Brady happened to be there, too. He went running up to Brady. <laughs> You know, Rodney Harrison, remember that meeting we had with Rodney earlier this year talking about Mike Vrabel being the smartest player on defense, like a classroom coach. Well, that's what he wants to be when he gets done playing. He wants to be a coach. Fourth and goal. And Holt's got to make a move. He won't make it home. As Troy Brown is in on the tackle. They've had to retreat uh, to go all the way to Troy Brown's number on defense today with their secondary decimated by injury. Phil, here's what we've seen today. Five sacks on the quarterback, Bolger, and three turnovers. Corey Dillon over 100. David Gibbons with receptions that total over 100. Vinatieri good on all four of his field goal tries. And his first career pass is his first career touchdown pass. Any of this surprise you today? Well, you know what? I, I shouldn't be surprised. So many people, I guess, thought now it's going to fall apart for the Patriots. You, know, you don't win two Super Bowls. You don't win 21 in a row unless you have tremendous pride, and that's that's what they got. So they rebounded. They came out here today, and they physically just beat the St. Louis Rams. And we're back in St. Louis. And it's been all about the streak with the Patriots early in the season, the talk. They finally, that streak coming to a close last week in the Steel City. 21 straight wins, but they're going to start a new streak here today. 
And uh, what about this uh, rivalry? We heard a lot of talk about that in St. Louis this weekend between St. Louis and Boston and how many times it's gone Boston's way regardless of the sport. Yeah, it, well, it has. Okay, I, I was informed by you of all these <laughs> rivalry games they've had but I know the Rams were talking about that Super Bowl from a couple years ago and I said in the telecast I was surprised I still heard about it. Well we know what we're talking about here the St. Louis Blues and I'm not talking just about their hockey team 1957 the Celtics won their first championship and it came against the St. Louis Hawks the Bruins won their first Stanley Cup in a number of years over the Blues that was back in 70 the Patriots in that Super Bowl and of course the Red Sox with the sweep just a couple of blocks away and it's going to go Boston's way again I know that that's going to be enough for a first down by Brady let's get another uh, update busy day for the crew in the studio let's go back to Greg all right Jim it's a final at Giants Stadium and it's not good news at all for Giants fans Anthony Thomas 41 yards here to put the cap on a Giants victory in or rather a Bears victory against the Giants in New York 28 20 one the Bears win it. Thank you Greg thank you for all the updates today and you know the shocking thing about that one too Phil is that it was 14 nothing in the first quarter of the Giants. Yeah it's, it's well <laughs> that's going to be a tough loss for the Giants. Yes. Losing two, yes. Well, Belichick. Been a tough week after that performance in Pittsburgh. Not a whole lot of smiles, but they're breaking out with them now. As we're going to put the Patriots now at seven and one. Well, you know why he's smiling? Because he understands what they've overcome. The inner the, the injuries, the way they lost last week. In here to St. Louis against a team that's had a bye. Uh, their strength goes to where all your injuries are so again tremendous victory for the New England Patriots like Mike Mark said our other matchups two and a half years ago with them we outgained them but they had different ways of beating us they just seemed to do it all the time they had uh, run backs a couple of returns in their matchups there are two matchups they actually had in that 0-1 season today they just wanted really the old fashioned way physically they just they dominated physically a little old fashioned plus a little unconventional yeah that's right you, you know, know with the Vrabel and the <laughs> Vinatieri pass and it all adds up folks to a New England victory 40 to 22. They go to seven and one and the Rams drop back to four and four. 